Hello. Welcome to day three. It is Friday today. Uh, it is just before 11 a.m. Uh, the plan to sleep in tonight did not work. They started pile driving outside about 8.30. So I am pretty tired, but I'm heading off to park now. I'm gonna play another 14, maybe 16 hours. I'll see how I feel. Uh, right now they're running a daily tournament, so it's usually pretty tough to get into a game right off the bat. So I might be waiting for a seat for an hour or two. Might just go enjoy the sunshine on like the rooftop bar, but <clears throat> see you guys in the next hands. All right, this is the first hand at Park Casino. I have Queen 10 suited under the gun. I bump it up to 12 and only the short stack to my left calls. So we are heads up to a really nice flop of 10, five deuce rainbow. Uh, gonna start with a bet here about half pot and he makes the call. So off to a turn, which is, it's not great. It's the king of hearts. Um, Going to start with a check here and see what he wants to do. And he bets pretty small, 20. Still thinking of the best hand here, so I toss in the call. River is the queen of spades, so pretty good now. Improved to really strong two pair. I check it over. He jams. A little bit alarming that he's bet so big. With like these short stacks, don't really bet this big unless I have it. But we do still beat some value, so have to call. And we get shown the pocket deuces. Gonna be an uphill battle from here. In this next hand, middle position has raised it up to 12. I defend the big blind with king queen off, and we go to a flop of 7-4 deuce. Good for my overall holdings, but not for my specific hand, so I check it over, and he does go ahead and bets 15, slightly over half pot. Uh, this board's just gonna be a lot better for me. I'm gonna have the 7-4 suited, the 4 deuce suited, all those two pairs, so I do go ahead and raise it up to 45, planning to give up if he does call which he does. So off to a turn, which is the five of hearts. It's a pretty good card to keep bluffing on as it just strengthens a ton of our hands. But with this specific hand, once he's called flop, like he's probably just gone over pair and I don't want to go too crazy. So I'd rather use hands that have some sort of equity, like a lot of my six X that just turned um, like a six suit. would be an amazing bluff here. King queen, not so much. So I just check it and he checks behind. So off to a river. It's really good. It's the king of hearts. So we really only lose about ace king here. So I'm going to bet and I want to make it a size that he can still call with pocket eights through pocket queens. Oh, I think a little bit more than half pot will be okay. So I bet 65. He doesn't think for too long and then tosses in the call. We show and it is good. Nice. All right, got a real hand here. Pocket aces. The button straddle is live and the small blind has completed. I bump it up to 25 and it goes all the way around to the button who is not done raising. Makes it 81 off a 225 stack. So 30% of his stack is in. Gets back to me. He's never folding for 154 more. Even if he does, it's not that big of a loss. So I ship it all in. He makes a call and right away on the flop, bank an ace. Pretty connected flop though, looking for some blanks. Looks like we got a boat. And eventually I show and he shows the pocket nines. Always seem to get attacked when I have pocket aces. It's, it's great. We are going to get into some very fun, very stressful hands now. Uh, I raise the ace four of diamonds up in the low jack. And I get a caller in the high jack as well as a small blind. So we are three ways to a flop of jack, seven, three, two diamonds. Very nice. We flopped the nut flush. So we start off with a bet of 12. High jack gets out the way and small blind check raises to 30. Um... I could ship it all in here, but I think just calling a position is a lot better. It's a small bet. We can easily call this properly. So I make the call and off to a turn, which is beautiful. The 10 of diamonds make the nut flush right away. And he does check it over. So I'm starting to feel like he might have a two pair kind of hand like Jack seven suited or maybe turn Jack 10 suited and just did a weird check raise on the flop. And he could definitely have a lot of sets, although I think they kind of raise bigger on the flop. But I don't know. I don't know about this guy. He seems a little, plays a little weird. So I do want to go ahead and bet. SPR is looking like it's just over two. So I want like 65%. Um, I couldn't calculate his stack, obviously, but I make 55, which is close enough. And he makes the call. So off to a river, hoping for no board pair, no diamond. Fortunately, we get the 10 of spades. Um, I'm still thinking I'm going to go for value here and jam when he checks to me. But he's got different ideas and leads for half his stack, $80. Um, 
I think I'm just beat here 99 times out of 100. So, you know, I think it over for a bit and I just decide to make the disciplined fold. You know, $80, that's like three, almost three hours of win rate. <clears throat> I know it's not big compared to the size of the pot. My hand's really strong, but I do just go ahead and muck it. And later on, some the neighbor of the small blind did tell me that he had pocket seven. So avoiding that one <laughs> narrowly. In this next episode of Sam Folds Flushes, we open seven six of, sp of clubs in middle position and get three callers. So we are four ways to a flop, which comes down about as good as it gets. Eight five deuce, two clubs. We got the open ended straight flush draw. When it checks to me, I'm obviously going to bet here. I can call any raise, any jam. I can do anything with this hand. But everyone calls. So <laughs> we are four ways to a turn, which is pretty good. The ten of clubs. We make the make the uh, flush right on the turn again. Big blind checks. I go ahead and bet. Doesn't have to be too big. Fifty five again, just like last hand. Hijack goes all in for the thirty three. Cutoff goes all in for the forty eight. And then big blind check raises to two hundred. Ah, uh, this is annoying. I think it over for quite a bit. I still have two outs to the like to the nuts unless he's got queen jack of clubs and only have one out but this specific player we are going to have some history over the next few hands i'm going to get into but against this player and only this player only i am going to make the fold and they go off to a river which is the deuce of clubs um hijack had king jack with the king of clubs very weird flop float Cutoff had pocket fives for the set and the big blind. Uh, he showed his friend he actually had the nut flush. So really weird of him to to uh, to raise the turn there with the nut flush. Um, yeah, I guess just lets me get away without putting in a river value bet. My opponent's been very nice to me today. <laughs> All right, this is against the same player as the last hand who had the nut flush and then raised me on the turn. Um, he actually faulted some player early on in the session he player to my left open queen jack suited one caller uh, it was 12 12 and then he re-raised to 40 the queen jack suited called got a queen jack something flop got it all in and then the queen jack got counterfeited and then he won with pocket kings and then he was like telling the other player how bad he was for calling queen jack suited for versus a three bet so uh once i heard that i just started three betting him every single hand I'm only playing three better fold versus him because he's going to fold queen jack suited to a three bet. Yeah, I'm going to print money like this. So um, I actually squeezed a 60 here and he finally does make a call. So we are actually heads up to a flop. This is going to be a very strong range. Like this is going to be like probably nines plus or maybe just all pocket pairs and nothing else. Sounds like a decent strategy for him. Yeah, this is probably like ace king and pocket pairs only. So we're off to a flop of queen, four, deuce, rainbow. Pretty good flop for my range as well as my hand. So he checks it over. I bet 45 and he makes the call. So off to a turn. It's pretty good. It's deuce of hearts. So now pocket twos is very unlikely as well as it doesn't change much. If I had the nuts, I still have it. So he checks it over. I want to get stacks in on the river. We're about just over two SPR. So we need like 70% pot. What do I bet? 170. Yeah, nice size. Um... He's in the tank for a little bit, thinks it over, asks how much the bet is, and then jams all in. Uh, I make the annoying fold, and he does show his buddy, who says that he had pocket queens. So, flop top set, turn the nuts, or turn to full house, rather, and then just decided to jam all in on the turn. Let's me off the hook again. Guess that's nice of him. Okay, in this hand, I have king-queen of clubs. Uh, middle position has been very active, doing big raises pre-flop. So he raised up to 20. The player from the last hand with the pocket queens does make the call. And I'm in the small blind king-queen suited. I'm going to put on the squeeze here. I make it 80. The middle position player calls. And then the hijack also calls. So uh, it's all right. We go to a flop of 6-4 deuce rainbow. This is going to miss everyone i still have a huge range advantage here so i don't know i just don't see them having these like low pocket pairs here so i'm gonna start with a small bet here if i get jammed on it's obviously just like nines plus just trying to get protection and i can easily fold but yeah uh and then as well if i turn a club 
I can just jam. So sounds pretty good. I bet 80. Fortunately, middle position jams right away. So he's probably got jacks through 10s, 9s, something like that. Hijack over calls. What are we going to do? We fold. Runs out 8, 9. And what do you know? Hijack flopped another set in a 3-bet pot against us. Damn it. All right, trying to turn things around. I have the pocket fours in the cutoff. There are two limps, and I raise it up to 18. I do get two callers, the, uh, both the limpers, and we're three ways to a flop. Comes down really nice. Seven, six, four, two spades. We have bottom set. Checks to me, or sorry, checks to hijack who bets 20. Um, facing this small lead, I'm going to raise it up to 60. Under the gun folds, and hijack makes the call. So off to a turn, which is the king of hearts. He checks it to me. I go ahead and size up to get all in on the river, bet 110. And unfortunately, he folds, saying he knows I have a king. Uh, right after this hand, though, I'm feeling a little bit tilted. Uh, not tilted, but I just need to get out of the poker room for a bit. As well, as I was on my way out just to go up to the rooftop bar, which I'll show you guys in a second, the bad beat went off at the table beside us for 76,000 something. It was quad 10s versus quad 6s. So I'll show you guys a clip of that too, but really happy for them to win that. It's on the wrong table. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. 70 Alright, so I've been playing for about four hours now. The run bet is still here. I've run into five sets today. Five. Twice in three bet pots against the same guy. Flop top set and bottom set. And then we've also got flush over flushed, but I made the correct fold on the turn. It's pretty easy versus that guy. He's also the guy who flopped sets on both three bet pots and flush over flushed us. Uh, and then we ran the nut flush into a full house that boated up on the river. Uh, luckily he donked into us because I was gonna jam for value for like and lost a like 160 extra But luckily he donked 80 so we could just make a pretty easy fold with the nut flush there uh, In for a thousand still have like 500 stacks, so I'm not down that much but <laughs> Getting run over today and yesterday, so I need a little bit of a break. So I came up to the rooftop bar here. It is beautiful Right, see you guys in a bit. Hope things pick up. <laughs> so in the previous hand, I had the four of hearts, the four of clubs, and that was my final hand, and I went to go to the rooftop bar. I come back down, and the very first hand I get is the four of hearts, the four of clubs. <laughs> Unreal. Uh, my nemesis, the hijack, has bumped it up to 20. I make the call as well, and then we are heads up to a flop of... And four, we hit the four of diamonds twice in a row. Four hearts, four of clubs, hit the four of diamonds in back-to-back -back hands. What a way to come back to the table. Um, going to check it over to him. He bets 20. I raise it up to 60, just like last hand, and he makes the call. Off to a river, or a turn, which is the eight of spades. And once again, I'm going to bet the exact same amount as last hand. I make it 110. Unfortunately, this player does find the fold, so we are also not going to get in a turn bet. That is really weird. Really, really, really weird. In this next hand, uh, there is a mid-position limp. I bump it up to 15 in the low jack with ace-10 off, and the cutoff also calls, and then as well as the limper. So we are three ways to a an okay flop of ace-queen-jack-rainbow. Middle position checks. I decide to play some pot control and check it back, as well as the cutoff. Off to a turn, which is pretty good. It's three of spades, doesn't change anything. Middle position checks once again. I'm going to start betting here. It doesn't be too big. I make it 20. Cut off fold and mid position makes the call. Off to a river, which is really good. Another three. MP checks and I'm going to go for some value here. It can be pretty big. Uh, it doesn't be too big though. He checks. I bet 35. I just don't think he's got a very strong hand here after check calling turn. And now river. So I'm just targeting like any random queen, any random jack. Uh, and maybe induce him to bluff, which he does raise <laughs> up to 110. Um, like, this is just completely bullshit. 
Like, what can you have here? You limp called preflops. So there's no aces, no queens, no jacks anymore. Ace, queen, ace, jack are possible, but they're never raising this river like this. Ace, three suited is very possible, but I expect him to lead turn with it quite often. Yeah, I just don't think this is how he plays ace, three, besides only one combo of that left. So, he could have quads, he could have ace, three suited. I'm not scared of two combos. And it just doesn't make sense. So I toss in the call and he shows the pocket jacks. Ah, <laughs> did not see that coming. Could not have put him on jacks in a million years. So I'll make a mental note of this guy and move on. All right, it's my turn with the pocket jacks. I'm under the gun. I bump it up to 12. Player to my left, I think his name is Shu, raises me up to 35. Folds back round to me. Um, pocket jacks at these stakes is just almost never a four bet. So I do go ahead and flat. Go to a pretty awesome flop of jack, nine, three, rainbow. Check it over to him. He bets small, 25. Um, this sizing doesn't seem too strong. So I just want to keep him in, allow him another chance to bluff. So I do go ahead and call. Turn is okay. It's the eight of hearts. Court's getting a little bit connected here. But I check it over and he checks it back. River is pretty good. Another eight, so we do have a full house now. We pretty much beat everything. I check it over to him, hoping that he's gonna bet. Just his hand just doesn't seem strong here. He might just check back some ace high, so I don't mind a small bet, but I'm gonna go for the check raise. And he goes ahead and bets. Huge. Hot. Um nothing to do here but go all in. Like he's either he's saying right now he's got a bluff or a very strong hand, so. Uh, I'm never getting called by a bluff, but an all inputs very strong hands in a tough spot. So I go ahead and jam all in. And now he's in the tank. <laughs> he's in the tank for quite a while. And he starts talking and he says, well, I was bluffing on the river, but now I think I'm good. <laughs> like music to my ears. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Um, it seems like he's got like an under pair, like sevens through fours, something like that. And he's in the tank for like less than a minute. And this old guy, two seats to his left, who just came over to the table with a $30 stack, calls clock on him. The man is talking himself into a call and gets clock called on him. And it doesn't take him too long after that. He goes, you know what? I'm not going to bother. I just fold. And then the very next hand, I didn't do something too cool. Um, people were upset with the old guy for calling clock so early. Like it was, it was a rush. It was really rush. It was not even a minute. And he's just, he's looking pretty grumpy. So he gets his hand dealt to him. It's on him. And instead of just getting on with the game, because he was, he made a comment about, what am I supposed to do, wait here all day? He proceeds to wait all day. He just sits there, crosses his arms, doesn't even touch his cards. And a minute goes by, two minutes goes by. Someone calls clock on him. Pick comes over, it's 60 second countdown. The guy's just still sitting there, cross arm. And I'm in the big blind. And I did something not cool. I picked up my hands, pitched it across the table, and it, it touched his cards by a, like a tiny little bit. The dealer just goes dead hand, collects his cards. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think that was really cool of me to do, but I did it. Mm, not happy with myself for doing it, to be honest, but that is poker. The emotions sort of run high sometimes. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. All right, under the gun has straddled. I have ace king off in the cutoff and I bump it up to 18. All the blinds call, so we are four ways to a flop. Comes out really nice. Ace six, deuce, rainbow, checks to me, small bet, 25. And the straddler makes the call. So off to a turn, which isn't my favorite. It's a jack of spades. Ace jack gets there. All right, just introduce a few two pairs, a few less hands that we beat. He checks it and we are still gonna keep betting though. And I want to get all in by the river, so a size up to 100, setting up the river shove. Then my opponent check raises to 220. Um, against most people, I'm just going to fold here. Uh, like most recreational players at this level, it's just, this is just a fold. But against him, I've seen him doing some pretty weird, pretty crazy stuff. And I can't just be folding when people raise me like this, even though I'm pretty sure I'm beat here. So I toss in the call, pretty much going to plan on calling any blank rivers. Seven of diamond rolls off. He's all in. I call. And unfortunately, we do get shown the jack deuce off. 
Probably should just fold that turn. I don't know. It just looks like such a bluff. Because I'm going to go all in on the river anyways. He's going to get it all. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Unfortunate. In this next hand, low jack has bumped it up to 10. High jack has called. I'm going to re-raise my pocket 10s in the small blind, or sorry, the big blind to 50. The original limper overcalls the 50. And low jack and high jack make the fold. So, really concerning about a limp call, overcall 3-bet range. I don't think my 10s are good here. Very, very, very rarely. So, I'm going to proceed with caution. We do get a 6-4 deuce rainbow. So, if we're ahead, we're still ahead. Uh, but I don't think we were. So, I start with a check. And he checks it back. So, feeling better about my hand. Turn is the deuce of diamonds. Doesn't change anything. Um... Still feeling a little iffy about my hand, but I'm going to go ahead and bet a little bit small. And he does make the call. So River is the Ten of Spades. So feeling really good about my hand now. And I still think he's got a, quite a few strong hands that can still hero us. So I go ahead and over bet and jam all in. He thinks for quite a while. It does end up calling. So good news. We show our hand. It's of course good. And I'm just starting to notice this. I have rivered a lot of set of 10s in this 100-hour challenge, like five or six. It's, it's weird. <laughs> but take down a decent-sized pot, 741. Getting back to even. All right, this next hand, we have ace-10 off. I bump it up to 12. Another player calls, and it folds around to a pretty aggressive player in the hijack who raises it up to 35. <clears throat> this sizing doesn't seem very strong, or it could seem like aces. But uh, this guy does 3-bet quite a bit. He's quite aggressive, quite loose. So I think from time to time it's okay to have a 4-bet bluff. So I raise it up to 85, about 2.5x. Folds back to him, he thinks for a while. And then shoves all in. Rude. We obviously fold. This next hand, hijack open to 15. Cutoff and small blind have made the call. And I've got ace-king off in the big blind. Easy squeeze here to 75. We had a call from the hijack as well as a small blind. So three ways to a flop. Comes down queen, six, four, rainbow. Checks to me. Um, I don't like betting here three ways. Their range is going to be quite strong. We're just not going to get this done without multiple bets. And ace king's a pretty decent check down hand. So I start with a check. And the check's around. So off to a turn. Feeling better about my hand. Deuce of clubs. Doesn't change anything. Checks to me again, and we could start bluffing here, repping the clubs if they roll off in the river, but I'm just going to keep checking, and hijack does check behind. River is the eight of hearts. Checks to me. No sense in betting here, so I just check it, hope to get showdown and be good. Hijack decides to put in a bet of 150. Folds back to me. It just doesn't seem like he has much here, but it's pretty apparent that I don't either. At the same time, I'm going to have hands like pocket 10s, pocket 9s, jacks, like those hands I can call down this river bet. I will have some weak queens as well. Yeah. I don't know. I just decide to let this one go. And he's nice enough to show us the ace, queen of spades. So, um, almost got paid. <laughs> almost got paid on that river. <laughs> Luckily, we do make the good bolt there. All right, we've got another big hand. I've got pocket kings under the gun. I bump it up to 12. Hijack and button make the call. And then big blind, or sorry, the small blind, who is a very old Asian gentleman, three bets to $51. Very alarming, even with pocket kings. And then big blind goes ahead and four bet shoves all in for 470. Um, I'm not too worried about big blind. He could have jack 10 suited here. Like, or eight, six suited maybe. Maybe. He's definitely got a hand he likes, but that doesn't mean he can't get dealt aces. And now it's back on me. And small blind has, you know, 145 big blinds. And he either has pocket queens, kings, or aces. Those are the only three hands that he can have. So 50-50 <laughs> is not great. But uh, with the dead money from big blind... I think we're just going to have to go with it and just pray and just pray that the old Asian man somehow worked up the courage to three bet pocket queens. So I go ahead and call both back rounds to the small blind who luckily starts tanking. 
So now we want the call, but eventually he makes a smart lay down. Uh, big blind rolls over his hand, and he's got king jack of clubs, so looking for a safe run out. Turn his ace diamonds, he's pretty much dead, so yeah. <laughs> that was a big pot to win right at the end of the session. Helps us get almost even, like getting close to even. All right, this is the final hand of my park session. Under the gun has straddled. I bump it up to 25 with King Jack off. Uh, must have been a call in there for me to make it that large, but whatever. Um, and then the all the blinds as well as the straddle make the call. So three, four handed to a flop, which comes out really nice. Jack, eight, four, two diamonds. Checks to me, and I go ahead and start, up, start off betting 35. Small blind makes a call. And then under the gun ships all in for 315. Uh, I played quite a bit of 2-5 with this guy. Not quite a bit. I played one session with him. But he is definitely over bluffing. Definitely, definitely, definitely over bluffing. I think he's going to have like way more diamonds here than he is going to have value. Like I think this is any two diamond hands. He's not going to pick which one he's going to use. As well as probably all of 10-9. Like he's just way over bluffing here. But... That being said, I don't want to fall into the trap of just calling everything when he's doing this. So I do have to pick my jacks smartly. And the Jack of Diamonds is the worst card in my hand to hold. As like 99% of the time he's going to do this is with a Jack of Diamonds. Like I'm just going to have to let him bluff me here. If I had King Jack of Clubs, this would be a snap call. But King Jack with the Jack of Diamonds, I just got to let this one go, unfortunately. Um, he does have the Ace-3 suited, but... Whatever. <clears throat> and we're back. It is just about 1 a.m., so another 14 hours. Um, played for about 12 and a half there. Really, 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 really wanted to leave at like 9 p.m. Uh, just running really bad again at park. I had a similar session last Friday at Park as well, but I played much worse then. Just kept running into it and then running into it again today, but I was able to make almost all the appropriate folds. <laughs> um, probably should have folded against the Jack Deuce with Ace King. <sighs> like, how many times can you really run into it? Uh, we did run into it a lot, uh, like flush over flush. Uh, people had six sets against me. Um, but I did manage to climb my way back up. I was in the game for like, I don't know, I'll leave that to the end. But I was stuck 1k at one point and then managed to lose less than two buy-ins by the end of it. Uh, wasn't too card dead today. Looked at my recordings, looked like I played about 70 hands across the 12 and a half hours. That's around 20% VPIP, so a little bit on the dry side. I do play a little bit more than that. But happy to not play like 5 or 10% again. Uh, didn't get 3-bet too much today, which is a nice break from the last two days. And tomorrow I'm going to go play a morning session at Villa. And then I'm going to head over to Hard Rock as one of my friends is actually playing the tournament there. And once that ends, I'll go join him to play some 1-3. Uh, yeah, that is it for day 3. We're still on track to hit the 100 hours this week. I've been playing... Three days of 14 hours. Getting tired. But I'm going to make myself some soup and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hello there. It is day four. It is currently 11.05. Uh, I'm going to head to Villa for a little bit until the 1 3 tables open at Hard Rock. I'm going to go meet my friend there and we're going to play till probably 1 a.m. again. Um, I'm going to change up the game plan today and I'm actually just gonna run good today. That's my new plan. Let's see how it works out. Alright, so in this first hand the button or so the under the gun straddle is live. I've got pocket eights facing a cutoff raise of twenty. I make the call and so do three other players. So five ways to a beautiful flop. Jack eight three rainbow. Text the original razor who puts in a pretty big bet of forty five. I make the call and everyone else folds. So heads up to the turn, which is the four of spades. Surprisingly, he checks. And versus this opponent, I just don't think they're folding anything. Like, I just don't think they're folding anything. So I'm going to go ahead and jam all in. I don't want to let them get to the river. And they do make the call. 
River is the queen of hearts. I show my hand and they show ace queen off. So raid was definitely right there, just not folding anything on that turn. All right, under the gun straddle is live. I'm in the cutoff of queen nine of clubs and I bump it up to 18. Only the straddler calls, so we are heads up to a really nice flop of six, four, deuce, two clubs. Interesting, interestingly enough, they lead into me for 25, which is pretty big. It's like 60%. Um, I don't know. I've got queen nine. I've got two overs and a flush draw. I'm going to raise it up to 75. And we'll definitely be calling off a jam, but they do go ahead and make the call off to a turn, which is the king of clubs. Pretty sweet. <laughs> and then even better, my opponent jams into me. The old donk call flop. Uh, raise and jam turn. So, what can we do? We call River is the seven of clubs. I'm not really worried about that card. And I show, and he does show the ace king off for what is that? Uh, all right, next hand facing a limp. I raise the pocket fours to 15 in mid position, and we do get a couple callers. So, three ways to a flop of king nine four, two diamonds. Nice. Big line leads for 25. Under the gun folds. I've got a set. I'm going to raise, make it 75, and big line calls. Off to a turn, which is the ace of spades. Not my favorite card because a lot of his king X are not going to feel too comfortable now. Oh, well. Um, checks to me. I want to get all in on the river. This looks like probably going to need about half pot, half pot. What do I bet? 110. Love it. And big blind makes the call. So off to a river, which is the Jack of Hearts. He checks it over. We got about half pot behind, so I do go ahead and jam all in. Fortunately, big blind does make the fold, so still a pretty big pot going our way. In this next hand, the button straddle is live. Big blind is open to 23. Pretty big raise. I'm in mid position with sixes. I do make the call, as well as the hijack and the button straddler. So four ways to a flop of... Nine, six, five, two hearts. Amazing, another set. Even better news, the original Razor goes ahead and bets 80 into 93. Um, he's basically just said, I have an overpair. I don't want to see any more cards. So I don't expect him to ever fold an overpair here. So I'm going to go ahead and jam all in before the turn gets a little bit messy. Hijack folds, button folds. And he does think for quite a little while, quite a little bit, but he does make the call. I say I've got a set. Um, we're just looking to dodge whatever he's got for his pocket pair. Turn is a four, river's a seven. We're probably good here. I show, and it is good. We got session. On to the next hand. This one's not too exciting, but middle position has limp to three. I'm in the big blind, ace, nine of hearts. He's got a small stack, so I bump it up to 15, trying to hit a pretty nice top pair and get it all in. And he makes a call. And we get just that top pair, top kicker on nine, eight, seven with the backdoor flush draw. But it's a board that's going to be much better for him. So I'm going to start with the check. And he goes ahead and bets 40. Over bets the flop. And now back on me. And it's either between jamming or folding here. Like he's not going to fold if I jam. So it's totally fine to go ahead and jam here. Because he doesn't have bluffs. Um, but I don't think he's betting any worse hand for this size. So I go ahead and make an extremely tight fold here on the flop. And... We do get shown the 10-6 of clubs. So really happy to avoid that cooler. That should have been another like $150 that we should have lost there. Nice. In this next hand, the button straddle is live. The small blind, big blind, and under the gun have called. I've got king jack of hearts and hijack, so I'm going to go ahead and squeeze to 35. Fortunately, everyone calls. So five handed to a huge pot. Looking for a good one. We get one. Jack eight four rainbow. Checks to me, I'm definitely going to want to thin the field here. And I want to size up a little bit as I'm pretty sure, as pretty much any turn that's a brick, I am going to be able to jam on. They're all around $400 stacks. So I bet 90, a little bit sized up. And the button calls. And then the big blind calls. And then the other gun person calls. <laughs> oh boy. Looking for pretty much just a jack or a king. I do not feel good about my hand anymore. Turn is really bad. It's the eight of clubs. Checks to me. I'm not betting this turn. This is just horrible. Like how many hands can these guys possibly have? There's there's no draws besides nine, ten. They can only have pairs here. 
So I check it over and now button goes all in for 235. Big blind and under the gun quickly fold and it's back on me. And it's such a good price. <laughs> it's such a good price, but I don't know. I just don't think we are getting the correct price for this. Yeah, this really sucks, but I do go ahead and tank for a bit and then end up folding. Luckily enough, button is nice enough to show us what he had. The pocket queens for the slow play. Could have been, that could have been bad. We did lose quite a bit, but not the max. All right, the straddle is live. Hijack has opened to 25. I'm the small blind with ace, deuce of spades. It should probably just be a fold, maybe sometimes a three bet. But I go ahead and call. And then the big blind under the gun call, which make me feel a lot better about my call. And even more so when the flop comes down, ace, jack, deuce with two diamonds. Amazing. Checks over to the original razor who bets 40. I'm just going to raise this up right away, try to get it in on the turn. So I bump it up to 125. Big blind under the gun fold. And now back on him. Um, I wouldn't do this with a flush draw as because if he jams, it's pretty rough to call that. Um, this is probably mostly going to be like gut shots like king 10, queen 10, and king queen that are going to do this. Like we just don't have enough value. So I think using gut shots only is fine. Um, good thing too, because hijack just jams all in for 360. Nothing to do here but call. I table my hand, he tables his, he's got ace queen. And right away on the turn is the queen. <laughs> so rude. Rivers of four, no help. Uh, we are going to lose this pot. Uh, it wasn't too much of a bad beat. Like we're supposed to lose this like, I think well over two to one time. So, oh well. In this next hand, low jack has opened up to 12. High jack and cutoff have called and I'm on the button pocket threes. There's only one option here. So I do go ahead and toss in the call and then big blind raises it up to 43. A little bit annoying, but whatever. Low jack calls, high jack folds, cutoff folds, and obviously we're gonna make the call. Go to a flop of king, queen, seven, two diamonds. So no dice here. We're definitely gonna fold to a bet, but it checks through. Get another chance at a set. Turn is the eight of hearts. And it checks to us again. Just gonna check, trying to get a showdown. River is the three of clubs. Nice. <laughs> Checks to me, and I'm definitely going to put in a bet here, and I'm going to make it look as bluffy as possible. I go ahead and size up to 250. Big blind folds, and now it's on low jack, who is deep in the tank. And after less than two minutes, another old guy calls clock on him. He's talking himself into a call, and another old guy calls clock. Ah! <laughs> um, thanks for about 10 more seconds, and eventually does just fold. Ah, uh, god damn it. This next hand, middle position has limped. Low jack has raised 12. I'm in the high jack with ace jack suited. Definitely good enough for a raise, so I bump it up to 45. Um, and then the big blind calls. And then so does the middle position limper. And then the low jack, so not feeling great about my hand. Especially when the flop comes down 7-7-4 seven, seven, with two clubs. It checks to me. Just going to check this one back. See an okay turn. It's the ace of hearts. We do get top pair. It was an okay kicker and it checks around to me. I'm just going to check this one back again. River is the deuce of spades. Uh, checks to the low jack who goes and jams his 87. No sense in doing anything but call. So I do that. Big blind folds, middle position folds. So feeling pretty good at this point. And we do show and low jack mucks. <laughs> yeah, we take that one down. In this next hand, I have ace jack off under the gun and I raise it up to 12 and everyone calls. Everyone. That is seven handed to a flop with ace jack off. <laughs> Not feeling great, but the flop comes down all right. Queen jack for rainbow. And interestingly enough, the small blind leads out for 20 into seven players. Uh, big blind folds and I'm just going to turn my hand into a bluff right away here on the flop. I think small blind has a weak queen, and I don't think they can uh, call us down. And this is also going to shove out a lot of strong hands behind us with a raise here. Like, king queen is not going to feel good here facing this action. So I make it 65, folds back around to the small blind, who doesn't think for too long, just folds. I can't believe I took that one down seven-handed. 
All right, in this hand, we have queen, jack of hearts under the gun. I raise it up to 12. And one of the tricky players, three bets to 35 from the small blind, folds back to me, and I make the call here. Um, could probably fold this against this player as they are just, you know, they're not three betting wide enough. But I do make the call, and flop is pretty good. King, eight, three, two hearts. And he starts off with a bet of $50, about two-thirds pot. Nothing to do here but call. Turns great. Eight of hearts. Um, this should slow him down a lot. It's the middle card paired and the flush completed. None of his hands are going to be feeling good here except for pocket kings. But surprisingly, he bets out again for one-third pot. Like, a little bit less than one-third. This is terrifying. That is the worst card in the deck for him. And he's putting in a tiny bet here. Um, I'm quite concerned. I just call... River is the jack of spades. So it's another hand that we lose to his pocket jacks, but I don't think he's going to have that too often. I don't know. Um, he goes ahead and bets 70 now. And I don't know. I'm just so worried about that turn bet, but I think that I should have just looked into his bet size a little bit more. This is quite weak, and I should be raising for value. But it's also tough for him to have anything to call with here besides like aces with a heart or ace king with the ace of hearts. I don't know. I'm just like terrified of pocket kings here. This just seems like pocket kings every time. So I do go ahead and toss in the call. That was wrong. He actually had pocket queens. So yeah, um, I don't think he's going to really call a raise either. But yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised to see him show down with that hand. Um, I still think I played it poorly, though, without raising the river there. Yeah. All right, coming close to the end of the session, I have pocket eights in the cutoff, and I bump it up to 12. And spot and small line, big line, all make the call. So four ways to a flop of six, four, deuce, two clubs. Pretty good flop for pocket eights. Um, checks to me. And I know the people in the blinds are very, very, very float happy. It does not matter the sizing. And this hand is most likely going to be a one street hand. Like, there are pretty much no good turn cards for me besides an eight. Like, literally, just no good turn cards. There's one, the eight of hearts. So, I would like to see myself pot it here, but I do go 30, which I think is a little bit too small. Uh, button folds, small blind calls, as well as big blinds. So, three ways to a turn, which is okay. It's the ace of diamonds, so any ace, x of clubs does get there. So, when it checks to me, like I said, it's a one street hand. I check it back. River is the queen of spades. Small blind checks, big blind bets 40, which is tiny little bet. It's like one, less than one third. Uh, I'm just going to call. This could be a six. So I call. Small blind also calls, which is concerning. We beat the big blind, but unfortunately, small blind had the ace five of hearts for quite an optimistic flop float there. And the big blind just had a deuce. Damn it. So close. All right, final hand of the Villa session. Button shuttle is on. Small blind has completed. I've got Ace King suited in under the gun, and I bump it up to 25. Player to my left calls, and it folds all the way back around to the small blind, who limp raises 125, half his stack. Um, I've got Ace King suited. It's button straddles live. This is like, yeah, I'm all in. Nothing to do here. I, I raise up to 300. Player to my left folds, and then small blind snap folds. Put half his stack in and then folds. <laughs> um, and he does say, well, limp raising worked against you yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I probably had like 7-9 suited, but... Alright, sweet. It's a big pot for no showdown, for no flop. I lied, I've actually got a bonus hand for you guys. Uh, I've got 7-5 of spades on the button facing 4 limps. I go ahead and squeeze to 25 and only the original 2 limpers call. So we are 3 ways to a flop. Which uh, comes alright. 4 deuce deuce rainbow. That's a board that no one's really going to have much of anything. So over pairs are still the nuts pretty much. Uh, checks to me, I'm going to start with a small bet of 25. And only the original limper calls. So. Off to a turn, which is amazing. Queen of spades, so we do pick up a flush draw. He checks it over to me, and I'm going to continue telling the story of, you know, queens, kings, aces. I could even bet probably jacks and tens here for this size, as queens is not too likely. 
Uh, so I bet 90 and he pretty quickly makes a call. So off to a river looking for a spade. We don't get it, but it's pretty much a blank. He checks it to me and was seven high. Like the strongest hand you can have here is like pocket eights probably, but it's not much. Like he can't have too many strong hands here. He's going to be forced to hero call with like seven, sixes, fives. And, you know, if you do, good, good for you. But I bet 210 as I would with any over pair here. Thanks for quite a while. But we get this one through. So ending the session on a high note. Just got back home about 15 minutes ago. That is actually going to wrap up episode two of the 100 hour week. This is day four. So we're over the hump. Three days to go. Uh, really good session today. Booked the first four figure win of this little mini challenge. Uh, wasn't card dead at all. Looks like I played around 85 hands, which is about 28% VPIP, which is probably about close to what I actually play. Uh, ran really well. Didn't get 3-bet or coolered or anything like that today. Is really nice. Uh, lost one sort of like a flip, the ace-deuce versus ace-queen, but we only really had like 65% anyways, so you, it's pretty common to lose that. Um, yeah, three more days to go. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and the time. It is 1.26, but I got back here probably like 1.15, so whatever. I jotted it down in my notes, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are enjoying this, please subscribe, like, comment, everything. Do the things. Just do the things. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.